it's time to sit back and relax with your favorite drink and listen. The Cat by Bo Whiskey Part 1 She crept along, wary of any shadows or movement as she slinked from tree to tree. She was careful and quiet, not wanting to be seen. Many people didn't like her just from her appearance, and she'd been in enough close encounters and at the end of fearful outbursts to know that staying away from people was preferable. Black cats weren't well liked, and too many superstitions overruled kindness in humans. She kept glancing at the houses as she passed, mainly the trash cans. If she saw one in a good location for pilfering, she'd had close enough to see if she could smell something worthwhile. She was so hungry, and she'd been travelling for what felt like an eternity. Though time passes differently for cats, she'd still been wandering for way too long, even by human standards. She used to wish for a home human of her own, for love and steady meals. Now she only wished to find somewhere dry to rest before the rain began, and a little food. Even a single mouse would do at this point. The houses started to become further apart, and she thought about turning down another road and trying to find a restaurant or something where scraps were almost guaranteed. If she did that, though, it was also riskier, and she couldn't be sure she wouldn't be caught in the downpour. Her instincts told her to press on, so she continued until the road was almost void of homes. They also increased in size, and the yards were clean and had less trees. It was too open and made her nervous. She heard steps nearing her and paused, looking around. She continued her nose upward to smell the air. Her ears twitched, and she pointed them in different directions until she was able to isolate where the footsteps were coming from. Across the street and behind her a bit was a person walking their dog. She focused her eyes on the pair in time to see the dog, tongue lolling out of its mouth, stop in its tracks and sniff the air. Its mouth closed for a moment before it let out a series of excited barks and began trying to pull its human in her direction. She needed to move fast. She turned her head back in the direction she'd been walking. Her eyes darted around, looking for something that could provide her solace, but the lawns here were too well kept and open. There were a few shrubs, but nothing dense enough to conceal her safely. She ran, her paws making soft noises as her heart began to race. Her stomach grumbled as well, but she couldn't think of that now. She had to find safety. From behind her, she heard the dog continue to bark and the human say things to it. It was a large enough dog that it could easily pull the person along or yank the lead free from their hand, which is exactly what it seemed to do. Cat didn't look back, but she heard the steady gait of four paws hitting the pavement increase, and she sensed it getting closer. Her tail curved downward as fear coursed through her. Oh, if she could only find a tree, she'd be okay. In the dark, she knew she had an advantage over the dog. She could see better than it, and even better than the human. She used that to her advantage and scanned the area ahead of her quickly. The hair down her spine wanted to raise, but she needed to keep moving as quickly as possible. She couldn't freeze up now. Across the street, she saw an overgrown yard begin to come into view. That was her best bet at this point. She'd have to try and use the tall grass and lose her pursuer somehow, maybe find a way into the garage or under a porch or something. She darted across the street and heard the dog change course behind her to follow. The human steps were still coming too. She heard their voice exclaiming things but couldn't understand and didn't care at the moment. Uh, She kept running. The thick grass brushed against her as she entered the yard and made her way to the porch of the house. Without stopping to take it in, she sensed it was old, which meant it might actually help her hide. The porch came into view and instead of leaping up the stairs, she followed her intuition and found a hole to the side of them. She lowered herself almost completely onto her belly and crawled through it. When she turned around, she saw the dog had stopped at the edge of the yard. It sniffed the air and whined a little as its human caught up and grabbed the leash off the ground. They spoke to the dog and tugged it away, and it was stubborn but seemed to not want to enter the grounds. The cat felt her body relax and she laid down, exhausted, onto the dry dirt under the porch. Once the pair was out of sight, she let her eyes close and she rested, 
slipping into sleep as the rain began. When the cat awoke, the sun was out but dim behind the rain clouds that were still in the sky. She got to her feet and made her way from under the porch to the steps leading up to it. There was no threat she could feel at the moment, so she sat for a moment at the top of the stairs and surveyed the area. The grounds hadn't been kept for a while, and what used to be a driveway was cracked with vegetation pushing through the concrete. There was a tree hanging over it, its long limbs reaching down to almost touch the ground. She turned to face the house itself and took in the untouched appearance. Paint was peeling, the windows were boarded up, and vines were growing up the wall. It was abandoned and had been for a while. Her tail twitched as she sensed something else that she couldn't place. She walked the length of the porch to the right and then back to the left, trying to understand it. There was movement inside, and a shiver ran down her tail. Mice were inside. With her feline agility, she leapt onto a forgotten table and stretched up to look through some of the slats on one of the windows. Glass was on the other side. She sat back down, tail hanging off the edge of her seat, swaying impatiently as she looked around. Oh, there had to be some way to get in. She hopped softly off of the table and padded down the steps. Her paws were sore from all the travel and her body was still tired. She walked through the grass, making her way around the house. By the garage, she found a broken pot. A piece of it had fallen in a way that caught the rainwater and she sniffed at it. Till the rain last night, it had been dry, so the water was probably safe. She tapped the top of it with her paw gently, just in case, before she leaned over and began to lap it up. It was still cool, but it didn't taste great, likely picking up some of whatever residue had been on the piece of planter. She continued to drink, though, knowing she needed the water. Once she finished, she looked at the garage itself. The door was tilted inwards, leaving a gap at the top didn't look sturdy, and she worried about it falling if she put any of her weight on it. And she'd come back if she needed to. For the moment, she continued around the building, looking for any way in. She didn't understand buildings that had no people in them, but she'd come across a few in her life. What she had learned is that usually it meant a good amount of hunting, so long as there weren't other animals that had nested there. So far, she hadn't sensed any other predators, but she kept her guard up and made sure to keep her senses sharp as she moved to the back of the house. There, she spied a window near to the ground that was broken. She knew that that was her way in. Gingerly, she stepped over the glass pieces and slipped through the opening. It was a jump to the floor, as the window was low to the ground, but high up in the room. Without much thought, she stepped off the ledge and gracefully dropped to the floor, only to land on a small piece of glass. She yowled in pain, startled by the sensation. She jumped quickly to another patch of the floor and began licking her hurt paw. The glass hadn't stuck in it, but there was a little blood seeping out. She turned it to it for a few minutes, working to stop the bleeding so she could keep exploring and find her next meal. Thankfully, she didn't have to look far. She could hear the mice scurrying around, in and out of the wall. Once her foot stopped throbbing so much, she limped toward a wall as silently as she could. She listened, her tail swaying back and forth, almost vibrating at times with anticipation. She knew that she couldn't rush this. Hunting took time and patience. Her stomach wasn't interested in that, though, so it took some work to focus her mind, body, and senses on her task. A small shape emerged from the wall she stood beside. It rapidly moved in an unorganized manner. Just a little closer, she thought, as she slowly crouched down. Her muscles tensed, and she felt her energy being built up in preparation for the strike. The mouse squeaked as it continued to wander toward the center of the room. It froze and stood on its hind legs, sniffing the air, sensing the cat. She didn't waste any more time and lunged, pouncing perfectly on her prey. Finally... A meal. She chowed down hungrily on her food. The cat's ears twitched as something stirred above her. She didn't stop eating, though, until she heard something creaking above her. She looked up and extended her hearing as much as she could. She couldn't smell or see anything out of place, but she knew she heard something. She waited a moment to see if the sound came again. 
When it didn't, she resolved to eat one more mouse and then go and look around. Thankfully, the steps of the basement were made from stone and still intact, and the door to the main level of the house was open. This made things easier for her, especially with her hurt paw. She was still limping and stopped occasionally to check her paw and give it another lick. The main floor was still sparsely furnished, as if the owners had left certain things they didn't want. This included a couch, a coffee table, as well as a table in the kitchen with two chairs left upright, a couple of rugs throughout this area, and a stool next to the kitchen counter. Everything was covered in dust, which sent her into a sneezing fit when she jumped onto the couch to see if it was comfortable enough for her to sleep on. There were no signs of people, though, or of any animals of significant size. So far, it seemed the only things here were the mice, some bugs, and her. She was tired after eating, so she began to knead the couch, her claws digging into the fabric and releasing. She looked round lazily, she did this for a few minutes and felt she could stay here for a while. It seemed safe enough, and it was shelter from the weather, complete with enough prey to feed on for at least a few weeks. Yeah, here was good. As she curled up and drifted off into a catnap, she briefly wondered why no other animals were here. Surely raccoons would have made this their home too. Her hair was standing on end, and she woke up with a start. She looked out of the window across from the couch and saw a bleak atmosphere outside. It was still light enough to be day, but the storm clouds covered the entire sky and thunder rumbled. Was that what had woken her? She stretched and yawned. She felt every nerve in her body fighting against comfort. But why? A storm wouldn't make her this on edge. She listened but heard nothing, but when she looked around, trying to determine the reason for her anxiety, she saw a small faint glow near the stairs. She hadn't been up them yet to see the second floor, but she knew there shouldn't be anything glowing in a house like this. She oddly didn't feel threatened, but she was definitely tense. The feeling she had before of sensing something she didn't know came creeping back. The cat jumped down from the couch, carefully as to not put too much pressure on her hurt foot. She methodically walked toward the stairs, taking in every bit of her surroundings as she did. Nothing seemed physically changed, but there had undoubtedly been a shift in the energy. She looked at the spot where she'd seen the glow. It was on the staircase a few steps up. As she neared it, she began to hear something... crying? She moved around to face the stairs directly and saw it. She understood a little better now, although she didn't know much. Yeah, she'd come across these things before. The humans didn't seem to be able to see them, and most other animals didn't notice them either. She'd met other cats on her travels that told her they were called spirits or ghosts. She never completely wrapped her head around how they worked, or why other humans couldn't see them, especially since they were always human-like themselves, but she at least had an idea of what she was dealing with. This one was in the shape of a young boy, who was sitting with his head in his hands, crying softly. Mew, she offered to him. He didn't show any signs of hearing her. He only continued his quiet tears. Mrrrt. She tried again with a lower tone. The boy raised his head from his hands and wiped at his cheeks, but still didn't show any sign of seeing or hearing her. She tentatively moved up one step and then another. She could already feel the sadness emanating from him and didn't want to frighten him. Usually she wouldn't approach humans, but this was different. This was only human-like. She felt he needed someone right now. A noise came from the second floor and the boy turned his head to listen. They were shouting from two voices getting closer. The boy jumped to his ghostly feet and rushed to the kitchen and the back door. The cat bounded after him the best she could, the pad of her paw starting to bleed again from the effort. She watched as he grabbed for the door handle and acted as if he'd opened it and snuck out as quietly as he could. Well, the door itself hadn't opened, though. Despite her being sure, she heard it open and shut softly. She didn't have much time to ponder on it, though, as the loud sound of feet running down the stairs came. She turned to see another spirit child rounding the bottom of the staircase, calling out. This one was a young girl that she thought looked a lot older than the first child. 
The girl looked around and made her way to the kitchen. She was looking for the boy, the cat thought. The girl acted as if she flung the door open and called out again as she looked around. The boy shyly appeared from one of the sides and the girl wrapped him in a hug. She held him and tried soothing him. And the cat felt her heart soften at the two. A pounding flood of stomps came from the stairs and she turned to see two more apparitions appear. An older human man pulling another boy by the arm. His grip was tight on the boy's arm and the boy yelled at him and struggled to be let go. The man didn't oblige though and only continued to drag him to the kitchen. He grabbed a large knife that didn't exist anymore from the counter and pointed it at the two by the door. He yelled something to them and pointed to the basement with the knife. The girl pushed the small boy behind her and yelled at the man. The man took two long strides to her and pressed the tip of the knife under her chin and spoke. The cat never cared to know what human words meant, but now she wished she understood more than anything. The little boy tried to grab for the door, but the man was too quick. He pulled the older boy around and held the knife to his throat. The cat didn't need to understand human speech to know this was some sort of threat. She growled and hissed, unsure of what to do. She felt rage coursing through her body as she watched this strange ghostly scene. The little boy nodded and began descending into the basement. The girl followed, and then the man pushed the boy in the same direction, only releasing him once they were on the stairs. The cat ran after them, but was stopped suddenly at the top of the stairs. The door wasn't closed, but it felt like there was a wall. She could see the steps and saw as the man finished his descent. She cried out for the children. She hissed and scratched at the air, but nothing worked. Soon her own voice was joined by screaming and yelling. The girl was sobbing and shouting. The man and the boy were yelling. She couldn't hear the little one anymore. She sensed she was too late. She stood on her back haunches and scratched furiously at the invisible wall. It didn't budge. She was forced to listen as each voice dropped from the cacophony downstairs. The light spilling over the steps turned red and the air grew cold. And soon the noise stopped completely and the light vanished. She stopped scratching in vain and when her pressure in the air she hadn't realized was there suddenly lifted, she poured in front of her, finding no more block in her way. The cat rushed down the stairs, desperate to do something, anything, to help those children. She was met with nothing. No ghosts, no light, no knife. There was nothing except dark stains on the rug that she hadn't paid any mind to before. Part 2 the black cat slept fitfully on the couch in the abandoned house as the storm raged outside. She couldn't seem to stay asleep, constantly waking up to survey her surroundings in anticipation of the spirits returning. She didn't understand where they'd gone, but also somehow understood that they had gone, at least for now. After the scene the day before, she took some time to investigate the upstairs. There were five rooms, all almost empty, save for one which was shut. She couldn't get into that one, but she wasn't in any hurry. Something about it made her hair stand on end. Yeah, she didn't like that room. Aside from the shut room, there was a bathroom and three bedrooms. One of the bedrooms had another bathroom attached to it, but that entire room was empty. Another bedroom had two small beds on either side of it. The mattresses were riddled with holes from mice and smelled offensive to her nose. The final bedroom wasn't any better, with another bed similar to the two and another mattress in as poor shape. Even she wouldn't sleep on any of them. Besides, she had her couch downstairs and that was plenty comfortable for her. After her exploration was complete to her standards, she went back downstairs to the first floor. She found a few mice to hunt on the main level and then spent some time working on the back door, which had a pet door built into it. It had been closed off, but she scratched and poured at it for long enough, taking some snack breaks, of course, to break the old plastic. There might be a draft now, but at least she was able to get in and out easily without having to go back to the basement. She didn't want to go back down there now. It felt wrong. For most of the night, she wandered the backyard, 
getting a feel for the place. She dragged the piece of broken pottery to the back for easier access to water. A few times she considered leaving, but something inside her just told her she needed to stay for now. Once the rain began to fall, she went back inside and tried to sleep. She refused to get up again until she saw the sky get a little lighter and knew it was daytime. The storm was beginning to move on and the rain had slowed to a sprinkle. She watched out of the window as the humans left their homes. Cars drove by and other animals meandered the streets occasionally. She sat in the window seat for a long time, just watching the world, vacant yet alert at the same time. When a pair of cats walked down the sidewalk in front of the house, she began paying attention. One was larger, mostly white with spots, while its companion was all orange with a fluffy coat. She was content with just watching and wondering if they were local, until the larger of the two, the spotted one, stopped and locked eyes with her. She tilted her head and perked her ears up. The orange one halted as well and looked in her direction too. She got to her feet and her tail stood straight in the air. The larger cat hissed, but she knew it wasn't directed at her specifically. Finding this intriguing, she rushed to the back door and the entryway she'd created. She ran out, still limping, to greet the other two. They'd passed the house by the time she reached the front, but she called out for them to wait. Both paused and looked back at her. That's a bad house, the orange one called to her. Why? she asked. There's bad in it, the spotted one said, displaying pilo erection. The black cat knew something was off from what she'd witnessed the night before, but she wanted to understand more. I saw something. Can you tell me what it was? she asked, trotting up to them. What did you see? the orange one asked with slight excitement. Hylas, you're not going in there, the spotted one said. I know, I know. That doesn't mean I can't get information, the orange one, Hylas, responded. Will you please tell me about the house? she asked. The spotted one let a shiver run through his tail and nodded and then began walking away. Come on, Hylas said. She followed them until they reached a home two houses down. They all climbed the stairs to the porch and the black cat waited while they each took their own places. Hylas perched himself on a chair, while the spotted one walked onto a soft cushion on the floor and sat. Well, I'm Hylas, and this is Hercules, the orange one officially introduced them. Well, um, nice to meet you, she said. And you are? Hercules asked. He looked her up and down, seeming to judge her. She brushed it off and sat down before them. I, um, don't know, she said simply. You don't know your name? Hylas asked curiously. Oh, I don't think I have one. How do you get a name? The black cat asked. From your humans, Hercules stated. Well, I've never had humans, she said. Ah, that explains why you'd be in that house, Hercules said. Yeah, but I saw something last night. They were spirits and something happened. There was a lot of noise, but there was also no noise. Oh, I don't understand. I mean, do you? She asked. Ah, ghosts. I knew it, Hylas said excitedly. Hercules nodded solemnly. I'll tell you what I know, but you can't stay there. It's not safe. Why not? They couldn't hear me or see me, she told them. Hercules thought for a moment, then laid down, tucking his front paws beneath him. A long time ago, before me, there was a family there, a man and three children. I've heard various rumors as to why, but I can't say with any certainty. What I do know is that they all vanished one night. No one knows where they went. There were no signs of them even leaving. The only clue anyone found were bloodstains, as if more than one person lost a lot of blood, Hercules told her. What you said and things I've heard from others, they could be stuck in a loop, replaying the moments before and during their disappearance, probably their death. But in the basement? she asked. He nodded. Well, they never found any bodies or the people, Hylas added. What do you think happened? 
she asked. Hercules let out a small hiss. I don't know, and I don't care to find out. There's evil in that house. Wait until Samhain night and you'll see. Samhain? The black cat asked. Hylas nodded. Uh, it's something that comes every Samhain, or Halloween, as the kids call it. It stands in the front yard. Oh, humans can't see it, but it's there every year. All night until the sun comes up. Even the neighborhood kids won't go near the house on Halloween. It's like the humans know something is there, but they can't perceive it like we can. Hey, that's uh, in just a couple of days. She was quiet for a moment, then spoke. Oh, um... Thank you. I have to go back. What? Why would you go back? Hercules asked fearfully. Because those spirits are trapped. I can't just leave them, she said. Hercules stared at her. Why not? I don't really know. I just feel like I can't. Hylas stretched. Well, if you don't die or disappear, let us know what you find out. The black cat stood and took her leave, making her way back to the haunted house. On the outside, it didn't seem evil, just sad and lonely. She knew what it was like to feel lonely. That evening, as the sun was setting, she heard the little boy crying on the stairs again. He was back in the exact same position. She felt her first stand up and she watched as the scene from before played out again. She followed the little boy to the kitchen and waited for the girl to come looking for him. She tried mewing at them, but they still couldn't hear her. She felt helpless as she tried desperately to yell at them, to pour at them, anything to get their attention. Nothing worked. When the man came storming into the kitchen, once again dragging the older boy, she felt rage again. He held the knife under the girl's chin and the black cat instinctively pounced, claws out. She aimed for his leg but expected to go right through him as her pouring had done with the children thus far. Instead, she felt solid flesh as her claws dug into him. The man howled and looked down. He saw her. He actually saw her. His eyes locked onto her and she felt fear begin to rise in her as she realized this. He let go of the boy and grabbed her by the scruff of the neck, lifting her to eye level. She did her best to twist and hiss and scratch at his arm. She could see lines of faded red begin to appear as she cut into him, but he didn't care. He shook her once, and she looked into his eyes. They weren't human. They turned completely white, but she knew he was staring directly into her own yellow-green eyes. His attention was pulled away from her for a moment as he looked at the children. She turned her attention to them as well. They were still going through the same motions as before, even though he was no longer acting out his part. They yelled and cried and then made their way downstairs. He followed them, shoving the older boy, possibly forgetting that he was still holding the cat. Once downstairs, she saw a lamp that wasn't there before. It illuminated the entire room, but she had difficulty looking around with the man holding her how he was. She flailed and twisted again in his grasp, and he looked at her, remembering she was there, his eyes still blank. He grunted and tossed her aside, and her head hit the wall, and everything went black. She was only out a short time, but when she came to again, everything was hazy. She shakily stood and looked around. The little boy was lying on the floor, bleeding and not breathing. The girl was tied to a pipe that ran along the ceiling. She yelled at the man who had his back to the cat. He had his grip on the older boy again. He spoke to the man in a begging tone. As the cat struggled to approach them, intent on attacking him again, she saw his arm jerk and the boy went quiet. The cat moved around so she could see what was happening. The boy's eyes were wide and a spot of darkness began spreading from where the knife was plunged into his chest. The man removed the knife, still holding the boy up by one of his arms, and moved to slide it across his throat. He muttered something as he did so. Well, the cat didn't take any more time. 
Even though she was still unsteady, she lunged for the man. She wasn't quick enough, though. He dropped the boy to the floor and she tumbled between them. She tried to move her body in midair to avoid landing hard against the wall. Her paws made contact with the wall and she pushed off in one swift motion, now aiming to land beside the boy. She was still disoriented and her landing was a bit off balance. In an effort to make sure she landed on her feet, she let her claws out and accidentally grazed the boy's arm. He didn't react as she retracted her claws and placed a paw gently on his arm over the tiny puncture mark she'd made. He gurgled, ghostly blood spilling from his chest, his throat and his mouth. She again felt helpless and didn't know what to do. Without thinking, she stepped onto his chest and walked to lean over his face and licked his cheek, clearing away tears that were falling. The boy's face turned to her a look of confusion mixing with the pain in his eyes. He tried to bend his arm and reach up to touch her, but he was weak and his fingertips just barely grazed her fur. She stood on his chest and let out a mournful cry before changing her position so she was lying down, covering his neck with her body. Maybe if she could keep him from bleeding too much, he'd have a chance. She knew it was too late, but she had to try something. She spoke to him in gentle mews and sounds, leaning her head over to lick his tears away. Around her, everything felt distant and blurred. Nothing but the boy mattered right now. She heard voices but didn't pay attention or notice much of the scene continuing to unfold around her. The boy managed to move his arm enough to place his hand up against her, and she continued to do what she could to comfort him. Just before he stopped breathing, she saw a smile on his lips as he looked at her. As his life left him, eyes involuntarily closed and her world shook as she slipped back into the darkness. Part 3 The cat opened her eyes to the dim basement. She was alone with no sign of the children or the man. She stood slowly, expecting to be unsteady again or have her body ache, but neither happened. Instead, she was surprised that she felt so rested and full of energy. Something seemed different, but she couldn't tell what. She looked to the window and saw it was still light outside. God, how long has she been asleep? The sound of a mouse scurrying around broke her thoughts, and she stalked over, following the sound, to catch a meal. She moved as quickly as she could, while also being stealthy, as she didn't want to be in the basement any longer than she had to. After her small meal, she bounded up the stairs and made her way through the entire house, looking for something that had changed. When she found everything was as she remembered it, she went over to the window seat. Perched there, she took in the world outside. Everything around the house was the same. It was only her that felt different, but she couldn't understand how. She sat there for a while, listening to the night birds and watching as the wind moved the grass and the leaves on the tree next to the driveway. She thought of everything that happened, how the man and boy had seen her and even interacted with her claws when they'd made contact with the skin. The man had even broken from the loop while the children continued their roles. Could she get to the girl and little boy, scratch them and somehow save all of the children? Would she need to scratch the older boy again too? The cat sat there and thought for a moment, then decided to try something. She walked to the edge of the couch and held her paw up, hovering in the air but still relaxed. The girl watched her with a quizzical look. When the girl didn't move closer, the cat stretched her arm out and reached for the girl. A hand met her paw with about an inch of air between them, almost like a high five without touching. The cat let her paw bend and drop slightly, and the girl matched the motion, moving her hand below where the cat's foot now sat still in the air, palm up. The cat looked into the girl's eyes one more time and wished she could tell the girl it was going to be okay. Then she stretched her toes and let her claw slip out. In a quick motion, she pressed her paw into the girl's hand, piercing the skin as little as she could manage. The girl winced and pulled away quickly, saying something loudly in shock. After looking at her hand for a few seconds, the girl looked back to the cat, who held her paw out to the girl again. This time, the hand that met her paw moved very slowly until it made contact. 
The girl's eyes widened as she leaned forward, placing her hand gently against the fur that covered the cat's neck. The cat leaned into her touch and closed her eyes happily. The cat started after them, but paused to listen to movement coming from the closed room. The man's voice came loudly from the other side, and there was the rattling sound of someone trying the doorknob. The knob itself didn't move, nor did the door when it sounded like there was pounding against it, loud enough to shake the entire frame. She stood, the fur along her spine standing up, and slowly turned away from the door. The cat made her way down the stairs and then sat on the bottom step and watched the children. They wandered around the first floor, calling out. She realized that they were looking for someone, and it struck her that the older boy wasn't anywhere to be found. She didn't understand. Where had he gone? Maybe the two cats she met the day before would know. She'd have to wait until it was daylight. Until then, she contented herself with just observing the kids while they searched for their companion. After checking the basement and returning, they made their way to the front of the house, walking past the cat on their way. By this time, she'd moved to the couch and laid down with her front legs stretched out before her. As they walked by her, the little boy froze, staring directly at her. He spoke softly once, and then, when he didn't get a response, he turned his head to the girl, who was almost to the front door, and said something again a little louder. She stopped and turned back to him, then retraced the few steps between them. She looked at him quizzically and talked. The little boy whispered something, looking back at the cat and pointing to her. The girl followed his finger and saw the sleek mini panther lying there. The cat looked from between the boy and the girl, realizing they could see her. She hadn't scratched them, though, so how could they see her? Was she wrong about that? The girl approached slowly, speaking to the cat in a low, non-threatening tone. She lowered herself to a kneeling position and sat back on her heels next to the couch. The cat's tail swayed lazily in curiosity as the girl reached a hand out toward the cat. She sniffed it tentatively, but couldn't smell anything. It was still as if the girl wasn't there. Thinking the lack of attack was a good sign, the girl moved her fingers to touch the cat's head, but her hand met nothing. The cat sat up quickly, surprised by the sudden chill she felt in her head. The girl pulled her hand back quickly, in turn startled by the cat's sudden movement. The cat mewed to her to let her know it was okay. As they looked into each other's eyes, the cat recognizing the sadness there, the little boy shyly walked up. The girl turned her head a bit and said something to him, and he said something back. The boy plopped onto the couch next to the cat and tried to pet her, but the same thing happened as with the girl. His hand just moved through the cat's body without making contact. She was prepared for the subsequent cold sensation that time, though so she kept herself from jumping. The boy retracted his hand and placed it with the other in his lap, now looking sad as well. The cat sat there with the children and thought for a moment, then decided to try something. She walked to the edge of the couch and held her paw up, hovering in the air but still relaxed. The girl watched her with a quizzical look. When the girl didn't move closer, the cat stretched her arm out and reached for the girl. A hand met her paw with about an inch of air between them, almost like a high five without touching. The cat let her paw bend and drop slightly, and the girl matched the motion, moving her hand below where the cat's foot now sat in the air, palm up. The cat looked at the girl's eyes one more time and wished she could tell the girl it was going to be okay. Then she stretched her toes and let her claws slip out. In a quick motion, she pressed her paw into the girl's hand piercing the skin as little as she could manage. The girl winced and pulled away quickly, saying something loudly in shock. After looking at her hand for a few seconds, the girl looked back to the cat, who held her paw out to the girl again. This time, the hand that met her paw moved very slowly until it made contact. The girl's eyes widened and she leaned forward, placing her hand gently against the fur that covered the cat's neck. The cat leaned into her touch and closed her eyes happily. Another chill moved down the cat's back and her eyes snapped open, a small hiss escaping her mouth. 
The girl moved her hand away, but looked at the boy. The cat turned her head and saw that he'd tried to pet her again. There were tears in his eyes from his frustration. Before he could start crying, though, the girl took his hand and said something. She turned his hand over and placed it on the couch, his palm up next to the cat. She looked back to the feline and said something, gesturing to the boy's hand with her head. The cat thought she understood, and she looked at the boy and mewed with the same reassurance as she had with the girl, and then repeated the action of piercing his skin. He bit his lip and fought back tears while he yanked his hand back and held it close to him. The girl said something, and he looked at the cat again, reaching out. She could feel his fear and wanted to do something to help, so as he reached out, she stood and pushed her head into his open hand. His face lit up and he began to pet her in earnest. She moved to stand in his lap, and the girl joined them on the couch. For the next while, she moved between the little boy and the girl, spending time in their laps and getting loved on. She'd never felt so wanted before, so loved. She purred and let them run their hands all over her. She even lay between them and exposed her stomach. It was a weird feeling, and she got a little anxious when they touched her belly, but she pushed it down and let them pet her. They spoke to each other and to her as this went on. Despite not knowing what they were saying, she felt comfort, true comfort, for the first time in her life. These two children wanted her and were happy to have her around. They weren't afraid that she was black and they didn't get angry when she took a break to catch a mouse that scurried into the room. Was this what the other cats called a family? The sun rose eventually and the little boy curled up with his head in the girl's lap. The cat let him hold onto her as he rested, but once she felt it was time, she wiggled out of his grasp, stood up and arched her back to stretch. She rubbed her head against his cheek, then stepped carefully to stand next to his head on the girl's other leg. She lifted her front paws to the girl's chest, and the girl met the cat's forehead with her own. Her eyes closed, and she sat there like that for a moment. Then the cat jumped down and made her way out of her personal door. She didn't want to leave the children, but she had answers to try to find. The air was cool, almost chilly as she walked the short way to their home. They weren't on their porch, so she hopped up on the chair Hylas had sat in before and peered in through the window. She could see a tuft of orange fur poking out of some sort of soft-looking box on a pedestal. She tapped the window with her paw, trying to get his attention. He didn't stir, but a set of eyes popped up from below the windowsill. They were wide at first, but then the pupils grew smaller, and the cat knew she had startled Hercules. He nodded at her, and then walked over to where Hylas napped. He took his time, yawning and stretching, so she hopped off of the chair and waited. After a moment, she heard loud and persistent mewing from the other side of the door, and a human voice respond. She ducked under the chair to hide when she heard the lock move out of place. The door opened, and Hylas and Hercules walked out. Well, they pretended not to see her until the door closed again. Hey, you're not dead, Hylas said, walking over to her and sniffing at her. No, but something happened, she replied. Hylas walked around her in a circle before jumping onto the chair and taking his normal place. Hercules sat down on the porch and began calmly licking one of his paws. When neither of them prompted, she began. One of the children is gone and the other two were wandering around the house and they can touch me now. Hercules stopped mid-lick and looked directly at her. What? They, they can touch you, Hylas added. Yeah, yeah, okay, let me go back. The black cat sat herself in the same place as before. When the loop started again, I dug my claws into the man in reaction. But I actually made contact and he noticed me. The children kept in the loop, but the man was able to grab me. Then I accidentally scratched one of the kids, and he could then touch me too. Oh, he didn't hurt me though. They were still in their loop. The man killed them. <laughs> Isn't that horrible? The loop is him killing the children. If they're ghosts, then it's obvious he killed them, Hercules said a bit dismissively. 
Well, where did the bodies go? Hylas asked. I don't know, she answered Hylas, and she continued. Earlier today, when it was still dark, two of the children, the little boy and the girl, were just there. Well, they aren't looping. I think the man is stuck in a room, but they've been downstairs with me. I don't know where the third one is, the one I scratched, but they could see me now. Well, they couldn't touch me, though, so I stabbed them a tiny bit, and then they could. You stabbed them? Hercules asked, an amused look on his face. Only a little, nothing serious. I just wanted to see if it would help, and it did, she told them. Oh, it's Halloween, Hylas said, and yawned. When the black cat looked confused but didn't say anything, Hercules explained. Halloween's a very old human holiday. It marks the beginning of a time when the mist between the dead and living places gets smaller. You know about the candy stuff, yeah? Oh yeah, kids go to houses and get candy. It's usually a difficult night for me, she said, pushing away the memories of past Halloweens and trying to stay hidden while also finding edible scraps. Well, depending on the human, many believe that Halloween is the night where the dead can walk the earth, at least as spirits, or they think this happens deeper in winter. I can't tell you if either of these is right or if both are right, but I can tell you that I personally know that spirits can roam more on Halloween. It makes sense that the loop might temporarily break on Halloween, allowing the spirits to move more freely. As for the touch thing, just off the top of my head, it sounds like you making contact with them, either causing them pain or drawing what will be blood, well, it made some sort of connection, Hercules said thoughtfully. What about the boy who isn't there now? she asked. I don't know, Hercules said, and began licking his paw once again. Hylas rolled over onto his back and looked at her upside down. Oh, maybe you broke him. Unceremoniously, the black cat stood, thanked them and left them to their morning outside nap. She returned to the house, pausing to study the outside of the front of it before going to the backyard. When she looked up to the second story, she saw the man's shape moving in one of the rooms. He was still stuck. That was good. The cat spent the rest of the sunlight lounging with the kids, playing with them in the backyard, and hunting when she felt peckish. She was enjoying herself for the first time, and found that she enjoyed retrieving small items that the kids tossed around. The children also got a kick out of this, and laughed time and time again as she pranced back with whatever prize they'd thrown for her. She wanted to spend her life just like this. She was happy, and that was new for her. She didn't want it to go away. It did fade, though, with the sunlight. At dusk, the kids both sat in the window seat and watched as other children, living children, moved about the neighborhood, collecting candy as whatever superhero, monster, or creature they'd chosen to dress up as. She could tell that they wanted to be out there, too, and wondered why they couldn't. The three of them sat mostly silently as they gazed upon the outside world. The cat curled up in the girl's lap and began to sleep as the light continued to fade. She'd barely fallen asleep when the boy whimpered and she was tugged from her nap. She looked at him, eyes half closed from sleepiness. She let out a small trill that morphed into soft meows. The children spoke to each other. The little boy got to his feet, backing away from the window. The girl felt tense now, too, but the cat didn't understand why until she looked outside, following their gazes. There it was, just as Hercules and Hylas told her before. It was Halloween, and there was a figure standing halfway up the sidewalk. It had a long cloth over its entire body, obscuring almost every part of it. One slender, almost skeletal hand gripped a long stick that rested with one end on the ground and extended to just slightly taller than the creature. There was something big and silver at the top of it, but the cat didn't know what it was. A strange bony face with sunken eyes slowly turned to look at the window where the girl and cat still were. The girl moved the cat off of her lap and stood up, eyes never leaving the figure. She let out a heavy breath. The free arm of the figure raised to waist height and another hand slipped from the robe as it held a hand out, beckoning to the children. The girl only shook her head and moved to join the little boy away from the window. 
They were afraid of this thing, but the cat didn't get any sense of danger from it herself. With a small noise, she jumped off the window seat and left the house. She heard the little boy call after her, but she had to decipher what this thing was that frightened the only family she had ever known. The cat made her way to the front of the house and approached the figure slowly, cautiously. She was on high alert, ready to run at the first sign of a threat. But the closer she got to the newcomer, well, the more she felt at peace. She slipped through the grass and emerged a few feet in front of the thing, placing herself between it and the house. It looked human, but she got the sense that it wasn't. It wasn't a ghost either, at least not like the ones inside. Hey, she called out to the figure in a loud meow. Well, hello there, little one, the voice came. The humanish thing bent down and tilted its head, looking at her. The free hand moved and the cat watched as it pushed something on its face. What had appeared to be a human skull missing a jaw was only a mask. Below it was a beautiful woman's face, kind and soft. As the mask was pushed up onto the top of her head, her hood fell down and the cat saw long white hair. She was so mesmerized that it took her a moment to realize that she had understood what this person had said to her. I can understand you, the cat said, confused. Yes, and I can understand you, the woman replied. How? Who are you? the cat asked. She stepped forward to sniff the woman. I'm not sure you could entirely understand, I'm afraid. But I am not human, let's just say that. I'm here for the children. The children? No, why? The cat hissed. Now, now, none of that. Oh dear, you've connected with them, haven't you? There are... The robe woman paused and looked at the house for a moment. Three, when there were four before. Now come closer, sweet one. As the woman crouched down, the cat took one cautious step toward her, and then another. When she was less than a foot away, the woman held her hand up. Right there. The cat sat down and their eyes locked. The woman's were very dark, with small, shining flecks that seemed to dance around. Her face softened as she looked at the cat, and the cat felt as if she was looking past her physical body. You've lost two lives, she said after a moment. The cat only stared at her, unsure of what she meant. Her lips spread into a sad smile. Your kind has nine lives. Last night you lost two. One was taken from you, and you gave another to save his soul, didn't you? I did? The cat asked, unaware of anything that was being told to her. The woman nodded, still searching the cat's eyes. Somehow you released a life when you tried to protect him. Oh, you sweet darling creature. You want to save them too. Where is he? The cat asked. He's moved on, like you should have a long time ago. Thank you, little one, the woman said. The cat looked back at the house and saw both the children in the window, watching the interaction. She turned back to look at the woman who had stood up. Can I save them too? The woman thought for a moment and nodded. I am here for them. You can bring them to me and I can release them. I've tried every year for a while now, but they never come. They have to be willing. And due to what is in that house, I cannot enter. They're afraid, the cat said plainly. Most of us are afraid of death. But I'm not here to hurt them. They have already died. I simply want to help them leave, to move on to where they belong, to be reborn and unleashed from this horrible prison they're trapped in, she explained. But they're my family, the cat told her. The woman, death, looked at her with sadness. I'm so sorry, but they do not belong here. They will continue hurting here, she said. The cat thought for a moment. She didn't want to lose the children. She'd just found them, and they'd found her. She'd already helped the boy, though. Could she really keep them here just because she was lonely? She 
He was about to decide to do just that when a sound from the second floor broke the soft night. She looked up and behind her, but was unable to see past the overhang of the porch. Was the man getting out of the room? Without a second thought of what she wanted for herself, she turned completely around and bolted for the front door. She scratched at it and called out for the children, yowling loudly, trying desperately to get to them as she heard crashing sounds coming from inside. The black cat looked back at the woman standing in the yard and begged her to do something, to help. I cannot interfere, I'm sorry, the woman said solemnly, slowly shaking her head. The cat growled and leapt off the porch, ignoring the stairs completely. She darted around the side and to the back door. She barely slowed down as she bounded into the house and began running toward where she'd heard the voices. She deftly maneuvered around the bottom of the stairs and up to the second floor, in time to see the man push the girl hard into a wall and grab the little boy's arm. The boy whimpered and tried to pull away, but didn't stand a chance against the adult's strength. The cat jumped onto the banister and then launched herself at the man's face with her claws out. Her battle cry was interrupted when the man reacted quicker than she expected, slamming his free hand against her. She cut into his wrist, but was buffeted back. His hand knocked the wind out of her, and she felt bones cracking. She was hurtling backward and saw the stairs flying under her, but she couldn't right herself to land on her feet. She landed on a stair and tumbled to the bottom. The sight left her as pain enveloped her small body, and she let out a weak cry. She thought she heard the little boy scream out, but all of her senses were dulled, Everything sounded as if it was moving away from her. Part 4 The cat awoke in the girl's arms, a hand softly caressing her head. She heard the girl sobbing before she even opened her eyes. Morale, the cat said, not that the girl could understand. The girl gasped and loosened her hold on the cat a little. The cat blinked and took in her surroundings, assessing the situation. Everything felt a little fuzzy, but it was quickly sharpening as she came to. They were sitting at the bottom of the stairs, the girl's back against a wall. Her knees were bent up, and she held the cat tenderly near her chest. The cat turned her head and looked into the girl's eyes. It was obvious the girl had been crying for at least a few minutes. The cat stood carefully and placed her front paws on the girl's shoulder, rubbing her head against the girl's cheek to dry her tears and comfort her. A sound from behind her alerted her that the little boy was still in trouble. The girl looked in the direction of the kitchen and said something. The cat didn't know her words, but thought she understood what the girl meant. They were in the basement. The cat growled and slipped from the girl's arms. She looked once more at the girl before walking into the kitchen and to the door that led to the basement. She was still a bit weak, but she felt her strength growing with each step, fueled by anger. The girl followed behind her. The cat knew she was afraid, but she was also brave and would do what she could to help. As they descended into the basement, they saw the little boy seated on the floor, crying. His knees pulled up to his chin. He was in the middle of a large circular symbol that the cat didn't understand, but she recognized it as bad. Something primal in her told her it was a bad thing, and she didn't need any more information than that. The man stood just outside of the circle, chanting something with his eyes closed. The girl crouched down and walked as softly as possible, trying not to alert the man. The cat looked over the edge of the steps and let out a small noise. She wanted to get the boy's attention without interrupting the man, and thankfully it worked. The boy looked up and sniffled. From beside her, the girl made a motion with her hand, and the boy shook his head in response. He leaned over and pressed his hand to the air. It was stopped at the border of the circle. He pulled it back and repeated the movement a few inches over, and again he was met with an invisible wall. He was trapped. He took in a ragged breath and began to sob again. The cat looked up at the girl and placed a paw on her leg, trying to tell her to stay, but she wasn't sure the girl could understand what she meant. The feline then padded down the remaining stairs and crept over to the circle. The little boy watched her, his sobs slowing. The boy said something to her, and she froze, only a foot away from the circle. The chanting stopped, and she looked at the man, standing on the opposite side of the circle from her. 
His eyes were now open, again completely white and devoid of humanity. She could tell he was staring directly at her, though, even without pupils. He snarled at her, and she sensed something otherworldly, something wrong, something not meant to be here. She growled back and crouched down in a hunting stance. Her muscles tensed as she prepared. The man took a step around the symbol, approaching her. As his second long stride came, she pounced toward the little boy instead. Whatever force was preventing him from leaving, it only slowed her. Instead of hitting what felt like a hard wall, it felt more like a cloth sheet. She landed against it upright, claws digging into the transparent barrier. She scratched at it furiously, shredding a section of it. She mewed at the boy urgently, and he pressed his hand to the air near her. His hand slipped through, and he moved out of the circle as quickly as he could, squeezing through the gap that Cat had created for him in the invisible wall. He hurried to his feet and ran to the stairs as the cat turned to face the man, squaring up to him, ready to give the kids as much time as possible to get somewhere away from him. The man glared down at her and bent to grab her. She was too quick for him. She darted between his legs and whirled around, jumping up to dig her claws into the back of his leg. He hollered in pain and twisted his upper body around to look at her. His large hand grasped her behind her shoulders, and she released her claws. She squirmed and yowled at him, making it difficult for him to hold on to her. His other hand came around and grabbed her by the throat. She was immobilized for a moment. She knew kittens froze when their mothers picked them up from this spot, but this was no gentle, loving mother. Fear flooded her body and she fought against the man's grip the best she could, swinging her lower body around and doing her best to push her body's boundaries. His grasp faltered just enough for her to wiggle out and fall to the floor. She landed on her feet and ran as fast as she could up the stairs. The children weren't in the kitchen, so the cat continued to the living room in the front of the house, extending her senses to locate them. She found them at the front door standing at the threshold with the door open, staring at the figure in the yard. The cat mewed to them and slowed down. This could be it. This could be their chance at freedom. She wove herself between their legs, rubbing against both the girl and the little boy in turn. The girl looked down at her and she mewed at her again, trying to tell her that it was okay, that this person was good for them. Neither child moved though. The cat walked ahead of them, the porch steps and then turned around and called to them. They both watched her for a moment, then the girl took a tentative step onto the porch, leaving the house. The little boy whimpered and the girl looked back, said something to him, and took his hand in hers, reassuring him. He wiped the back of his other hand across his face and took a step as well. The cat walked calmly down the steps and toward the figure, stopping just before her. They're afraid she said to the woman. The woman nodded at her. Almost everyone is afraid of the unknown. That's where I must take them. Can the man leave the house too? The cat asked, worried about him following. The woman nodded sadly. The cat turned around to face the children and sat down. She called for them to join her, but they were hesitant. They took small, nervous steps and paused once they were both off of the port. They both watched the woman behind the cat carefully. In an effort to show them it was okay, the cat stood back up and walked to the woman and rubbed her head against the bottom of the woman's cloak. The woman smiled down at her and bent to run a thin hand over the cat's back. You are a marvel, dear one, she told her in a whisper. I don't have much longer. Once the sun begins to rise, I must go. Perhaps you can help them feel a little braver now cat mewed up at her and trotted over to the kids. She rubbed against them both and let the girl pick her up. The children took another few steps and the cat heard the woman's voice begin to speak to them. It's okay, darlings. It can be over if you take my hand, the woman said and held out a hand to them as they approached. The girl looked over her shoulder at the house and then back to the woman. She asked something that the cat didn't understand. The woman responded, but the cat was too focused on a growing noise coming from in the house. She watched over the girl's shoulder as the distance between them and the porch grew, but she knew something was coming. Heavy steps grew louder from within the darkness, 
and the second she saw the man appear in the doorway, she jumped over the girl's shoulder and stood behind them. The hair stood up and she arched her back, hissing at the man. They were so close to being away from him, she couldn't let him interfere now. Behind her, she heard the woman speak. You should not be here. The cat didn't take her eyes off the man, who now stood on the porch, his arms crossed. He was smiling, his white eyes almost glowing. It unsettled the cat, and her tail twitched. The man chuckled and said something to the woman. You will release these children. You stole them in life, and you've imprisoned them in death. No more, the woman said. The smile dropped from the man's face and she spoke again. Children, if you wish to leave this place, we must go now. He is right, the sun is about to begin rising and I will have to go then. If we don't go now, I won't be able to return here for another year, the woman spoke to the kids. Her voice attempted comfort but was edged with a sense of urgency. The cat watched the man walk down the stairs, his fists now at his sides, a determined look on his face. He yelled something as he crossed the distance. From behind her, the cat heard the girl whisper something to the little boy. He whined, but she was insistent. Without letting him get any closer, the cat lunged toward the man. He tried to batter away again, as he had before. She anticipated his action and adjusted herself to land behind him. Her paws hit the ground and she spun around. Now, right behind him, she hissed at him and he stopped, turning to face her. He said something, his voice sounding distorted now. He raised a hand and the cat felt her body lift off of the ground. She didn't understand what was happening as she was hoisted into the air without the man even touching her. He smirked at her and began to clench his open fist. She was floated toward him, yelling and writhing the whole way. His hand encircled her throat and he said something in a smug tone. Behind her, the girl screamed as the man tightened his grip on the cat's throat. Once again, the world went black. The sensation of everything returning to her was beginning to feel familiar. The cat's eyes blinked as she opened them and stood on shaky legs. There was no time to let her body recuperate. She had to help the children. She called out to them as she steadied herself and looked to where she'd left them. She didn't know how much time she'd been out, but she knew she needed to be prepared immediately for whatever was unfolding now. The night sky was beginning to lighten, and she knew that dawn would be there soon. Ahead of her, she saw both children placing their hands in the woman's outstretched hands. The man was being kept at bay, just barely out of reach, by something that shimmered in the light of the street lamp. As the cat focused on it, it began to fade and the woman looked at the cat, slight alarm on her face. She had the kids, though, and a soft mist began to swirl and press in on the three of them. The man noticed the change in whatever it was that kept him from his goal, and before anyone could react, he thrust out a hand and grabbed the girl's upper arm. He wrenched her away from the woman. The little boy cried out and reached for the girl, but the woman pulled him close and held him tight as they both vanished into the mist. The man laughed and let go of the girl. She dropped to her knees and stared at the spot where the woman and the little boy had been. The man said something, then turned back to the house. The cat, wanting to avoid him, jumped into the overgrown yard and waited for him to enter the house. She then walked over to the girl and sat in front of her, looking into her face. When the girl didn't move, the cat mewed at her. The girl's thoughts were broken. She looked down at the feline with a sad half-smile. She said something and sat back on her heels. The cat stood and placed her front paws on the girl's thighs and reached up with one toward her face. The girl's smile barely grew as she gently touched the cat and rubbed under her chin. The girl sighed and looked toward the street. Curious as to what she was looking at, the cat moved to sit beside her. The girl spoke softly and absent-mindedly pet the cat as they stared at nothing. The cat thought back on the events of the night. The little boy had moved on now, and she was sad, but also happy. As the sky began to show colors of purple and pink, 
The cat lied down beside the girl and slept. She was absolutely exhausted, and she'd need to regain all of her strength to save the girl. Part 5 Sunshine bathed the cat as she awoke. She stood, stretched and yawned, taking her time to fully wake up. The girl was no longer with her, but she'd expected that since it wasn't Halloween anymore. Her body was a little sore as she trotted to the back of the house. She knew the feeling would fade, especially after a decent meal. The sky on the horizon was growing darker, and she felt a storm approaching. Now that she had shelter, she didn't mind. In fact, she welcomed it this time, as it would mean fresh water in the makeshift bowl. Everything suddenly changed that evening. The usually quiet and empty house filled with yelling and the faint pounding of ghostly footsteps suddenly. The cat had been waiting for it, though. She was as prepared as she could be for what she knew had to be done. The little boy was able to go with the lady in the night before that, but she'd sacrificed one of her lives for the older boy to be released. She didn't know exactly how she'd done it, but after all of her thinking and considering options during the day, she'd come to only one conclusion. She would either have to let the girl relive her death so that the feline could try and offer up another life for her, or she had to help the girl turn the tables on the man and destroy him somehow. She wasn't sure how this would even work, but she hoped that by changing the outcome, it could completely break the cycle. The sound of a door opening upstairs made the cat's muscles tighten in preparation. She stood at the bottom of the stairs, looking up, waiting for it to begin. The girl bounded down the stairs and passed the cat, who meowed loudly at her. The girl glanced over her shoulder and saw the cat catching up and then passing her. The cat darted into the kitchen, meowing again at the girl to get her to come this way. She leapt onto the counter and pawed at a knife lying there. The girl tried the front door first, but when it wouldn't budge and the sound of heavy footsteps slowly and steadily started echoing from upstairs, she followed the cat's path and went to the kitchen. She couldn't understand the cat, though, and didn't seem to see the knife. The girl looked bewildered and confused at trying to see what the cat was touching. The cat realized that the girl couldn't see it because it wasn't in her world. It was in the cat's. She hadn't considered this and felt her heart start to beat faster. If the girl couldn't arm herself, how would this work? She didn't want to watch her die, and if the girl could win, then maybe she could stay as a ghost and a companion for her. They could make this a home, and neither of them would be alone. The footsteps reached the bottom stair, and the man's voice bellowed out loudly, seeming to shake the entire house. That was it. The cat remembered that the man had grabbed that large knife he used to hurt and kill the children. She couldn't recall precisely where he'd grabbed it from, but walked the length of the counter, mewing at the girl. After a few seconds, the girl either caught on to what the cat was trying to tell her, or came to the realization herself. She rushed to the far end of the counter and frantically grabbed for something the cat couldn't initially see. The knife seemed to materialize when the girl brandished it toward the entryway for the kitchen. The man approached with menacing but calm steps, his voice taking on a sing-song tone. The cat watched him as he stopped in the doorway and looked at the girl. He said something to her and then laughed his eyes closing as if a very funny joke had been told. The laughter stopped suddenly and he opened his eyes again, staring at the girl with those blank white ones. The cat growled from her place beside the girl, and the girl held the knife out in front of her and yelled at him. He took one slow step and the girl flinched. He took another and the girl backed up. The hairs all along the cat's spine stood on end and she arched her back. He hissed at the man as he continued to approach. She couldn't win this for the girl. She could do her best to help. The man simply glanced at the cat and said something under his breath, then threw out one of his hands in the air in a blocking motion. He wasn't close enough yet to reach her, but she felt the air around her suddenly change. It became thick, as if a heavy blanket was thrown over her. With each breath she took, it was harder to breathe until her body was forced into a crouched position and she felt immobilized. Her eyes darted between the girl and the man. The girl looked at her with shock and horror on her face, then screamed something at the man. 
His mouth curled into a smirk and he continued to hold his hand out till he was only a couple of feet from the girl. Her confidence and determination wavered and she let the knife lower as she looked at the cat with a worried expression. Both the man and the girl stood still as the cat alternated between small hisses and a few whines. She didn't understand what was happening to her, but felt a large weight on her, pinning her down and making it more and more difficult to get a full breath of air into her lungs. The girl seemed to be pleading with the man, but he only stood there, completely still, staring at her. They stayed like that for a moment, and the man acted with such agility and quickness that the cat was even caught off guard. In a matter of only a few seconds, the man's hand dropped, the air pressure around the cat lifted, and her body immediately reacted by pulling in deeper breaths as the man grabbed the girl by both of her wrists and spun her around so her back was against him and the knife clattered to the floor. Before the cat knew what she was doing, she reacted by launching herself at the man. He turned in time for her claws to sink deep into his back, and she held on with all her might. His body acted involuntarily, and his shoulders stretched back, the blades nearing each other over his back that arched slightly in pain as he howled. He didn't let go of the girl completely, though. Instead, he released one of her wrists, but still had a tight grip on the other. Quickly, he bent over and snatched the knife from the floor as the girl struggled against him. She turned her body to face him the best that she could, and he held the knife up to her throat. At his back, the cat continued to hiss. She bit at him, and in the moments she felt stable enough, she would pull one paw away from him and scratch at his back. Through gritted teeth, he spoke to the girl, doing his best to ignore the cat attached to him. With the girl in front of him and the cat holding on the best she could, the man moved them all to the doorway of the basement. As they began to descend the steps, the cat released and jumped away from the man. He made a noise of stifled pain, but continued down to where the strange circle was. He pushed the girl toward it and said something to her. She complied and walked to the center of the circle and then kneeled down. Her eyes scanned the room, though, and the cat wondered if the girl could find anything to help. The man walked to the center of the circle and knelt down too, facing the girl. She looked at him with wide eyes, and the cat could feel her fear. The feline knew that it didn't matter how many times the girl was forced to endure her own death, it was still terrifying. She watched as the man grabbed the girl's wrists in one hand, raised them in the air, and held the knife aloft to the sky with the other. As he spoke to the air above him, the cat crept closer, trying to determine the best option for her next move. She didn't have enough time, though. The man stopped speaking and looked again at the girl. The arm holding the knife lowered and his elbow bent as he pulled back, readying for his strike. Without thinking, the cat lunged between the two, doing her best to jump onto the girl's chest and block it. The man saw the cat suddenly appear, scrambling to hold on to the girl who cried out in pain at the sudden sensation of the cat's claws. She hated hurting her, but this was the only thing she could think to do in the moment. White eyes met the cat's and the man faltered for only a second before plunging the knife through the cat and into the girl, pinning them together. He let the girl's arms drop as he removed the knife from their bodies. The pair fell to the ground, each on their side, facing one another. The girl coughed and blood trickled from her mouth and she struggled to breathe. The cat felt her body giving out on her, but she did her best to stay close to the girl to mew at her gently to try to tell her it was okay. They were together, but the pain wouldn't last. As the girl's eyes began to fill with tears, she stared into the cat's eyes, and the cat used all her strength to lay against the girl's chest with her head on the girl's arm, near her face. She let out one final guttural meow, and everything faded away for both of them. When the cat's eyes opened again a few minutes later, the floor felt unsteady. She was almost used to the strange sensation of coming back to life and the slight disorientation, but this was different. The floor was actually moving. The tortured ghost's body was gone, but the blood remained, pooling around her and wetting her fur. She stood up and felt vibrations under her feet. 
She looked around and saw the man still there, once again kneeling in the circle. He had blood on his face in odd lines and curves. His hands were parallel to the floor, and he seemed unfazed by the movement of what was supposed to be sturdy. His eyes were closed, and he was so focused on his chanting that the cat briefly wondered if he could even feel the floor shifting beneath him. She moved away from him quickly, exiting the circle and noticing that the lines seemed darker now. She paced around the circle, unsure of what to do. The children were gone, but did she really succeed in sacrificing herself for the girl? She wouldn't know until tomorrow. She didn't want to wait. How could she ensure that the man couldn't torment the girl anymore if she really wasn't gone? She stopped walking the perimeter of the circle at a point where she was closest to the broken window. She looked out of it, and for the first time, noticed that the storm had indeed set in. Lightning flashed across the sky and rain pelted the outside of the house and the ground. She walked up to the wall and sat, staring at the window out of reach. She closed her soft green-yellow eyes and asked for guidance from whoever might have come before her. Thunder tore through the sky once and then twice, and she felt vibrations from beneath her and above all at once. Rain trickled down from the broken glass and fell on her gently. The world around her faded away for just a moment, and then she opened her eyes. The cat turned around and faced the circle and the man. The lines were now starting to glow softly as the man leaned forward, his palms now against the floor as he continued to chant on all fours. She sat and flicked her tail, staring at him, and she leaned her head back and let out a long, mournful wail. Unlike any sound she'd made before, it was low, earnest, and full of emotion. She lamented until her lungs were empty, and then she began again. The man turned his head and looked at her, confused, but didn't cease his chanting. They stayed like this for just another moment, and the cat felt a presence approaching. More than one, actually. She continued her call as behind her, paws met the floor and joined her. First, she saw Hylas and Hercules come to stand beside her on her right, lining up with the circle. They acknowledged each other with only a look, and then the two joined in her ancient song. More cats appeared around her, some coming from the stairs and some from the window behind her. Other than Hercules and Hylas, she didn't know any of them, but she knew instinctively why they were there, and that they were all kindred spirits. Each one joined in, making a second circle just outside of the drawn one. The man stopped his chanting finally, and began looking around, confused. The cats continued to appear until there were at least two dozen, making the feline ring too deep in most areas, three in some. They all lent their voices to the wordless song, most with their eyes closed and heads held high and back. The cat chorus filled the basement and leaked out into the night. Only one kept her eyes open, watching the man. The black cat saw him get to his feet and look around him. The lines from his circle glowed brighter and brighter, and the cat saw the anger in him shift to confusion, and then to fear as a crack appeared in the circle near his foot. Careful to remain inside the circle, he took a small step away from the thin opening. He yelled at the cats and held the knife out toward them, turning in a circle. He was afraid, finally. The cats weren't bothered by his threats, though, even if any of them understood him. All at once, the lament stopped, and the cats lowered their heads to look at the man inside the circle. The glow from the circle continued to grow until it was almost hard to look toward, but none of them looked away. They all sat, stoically, just staring at him. He stopped looking around once his eyes fell on the black cat leading them in this. Anger rushed up, and he moved to kick at her, but in tandem, each cat began to growl low in their throat. This made him pause. But when none attacked, he once again pulled his foot back to unleash a physical attack. Rumbling from beneath them grew and matched the rumbling from not only the storm outside, but the cat's throaty verbalization of anger. The ground beneath him crumbled away suddenly, contained to the circle that he was drawn until he was left in a small space only big enough for his feet. 
Pain screams and cries came from the black chasm around him instantly, but were broken after a few seconds by a deep, dark laughter. The man began to plead with something the cat couldn't see. He looked down and around him, begging something to spare him. The laughter stopped, but echoed through the basement, taking too long to fade into nothing. Growling from the cat ceased, and they all sat, alert, and watching the man. The black cat saw pale and sharp-looking hands begin to emerge from the dark. They were coming up from the darkness, using the small remaining pedestal the man stood on to pull themselves up. He watched as the arms appeared, and one hand grabbed the man's ankle. He continued to plead with whatever was coming for him. By the time a head began to peek out of the abyss, it was facing the black cat. She saw a face framed by white hair, gaunt and pale-looking. The eyes were completely white, as the man's had been, and she glanced at the man to be sure his eyes were normal again. After seeing that they were, she looked back at the thing crawling up from below. And it wasn't human, she knew that, but above the neck it had a human-like face, and she could see it was hungry, starving even. The neck stretched and stretched up to the man, as if it would never end. The shoulders never even appeared despite the thing's face reaching the same height as the man's. He looked away from the cat and stared at the man, locking eyes with him. With one arm draped over the chunk of basement, it released the man's ankle with his other hand and reached up to his chest. Without hesitation, the entity grabbed over the man's heart, short, sharp nails digging into his skin. It smiled at the man and he began to convulse and shake. As the cats watched on, the hand grasping the man's chest began to melt. It didn't drip down, though. Instead, the thick liquid of this creature defied gravity and slid into the open wounds on the man's chest. The thing pushed its hand into the man as it melted until its wrist was even gone. The glow around the circle was already close to blinding, but now it became unbearable. All of the cats were forced to close their eyes or look away, even the black cat, though she tried desperately to watch on. The light began to fade, and they opened their eyes. The black cat saw the man standing there, but it was as if the creature was superimposed over him. She stared, shocked at what she was seeing. The man said something as he looked down at his own hands, bending the fingers and extending them, as if testing them out. He chuckled it was the same laugh that preceded the creature rising from the depths. Now, Hercules, who sat close beside her, yelled at the black cat. She didn't need to ask. She knew what to do. Or, closer to the truth, her body knew what to do. The ancient wisdom and centuries of cats from before propelled her forward as she lunged at the man. The ground was beginning to piece itself together little by little, as he held his hand over the opening. She aimed for his shoulder, and when her body made contact with his, he lost balance. As his knees began to buckle and his feet gave way, she pushed herself off of him quickly, launching herself at the edge of the circle opposite to where she'd started. The cats there moved to the side to give her room to land. She fell short, her front claws trying to find the purchase in the floor. Beside her, the man's head collided with the edge of the chasm as he flailed and groped for anything. He was unsuccessful, and as a swift bangle grabbed the scruff of the black cat's neck with her mouth, his now sharpened nails scraped down her stomach, causing bloody gashes. He fell, screaming, into the vast beneath. Other cats came to the black cat's aid. They helped pull her from the pit as it continued to close. She lay there, bleeding as they began a new lament, led by Hylas and Hercules, who had come to her side. This one was heart-wrenching, and she moaned in pain instead of joining in. From the darkness behind her, a soft, familiar voice began to speak. It's okay, sweet one. Close your eyes. It's time to rest. The black cat fought the urge to let go, however. She needed to know if it had worked. Are they okay? She managed to ask. 
The cat's mournful song began to fade, and they moved for the woman to sit down beside the black cat. She reached out a hand, stroked the black cat's silky fur softly. Yes, they are free. And now you can be too, she told the cat. Can't hurt them anymore? The cat asked with difficulty. The woman nodded and continued to lovingly pet her. You've been so brave, little one. You have only one life left, and I want to give you a present, the lady said softly, her voice barely above a whisper. Present? the cat asked. She nodded again and pressed one hand to the cat's body, and three fingers to the space between the cat's eyes, and then spoke. Rest now. You'll know it when the time is right. The cat let out one more low moan and closed her eyes. Warmth filled her body, and she let go. This time when the cat awoke, everything was different. The basement was empty, all of the other cats had gone. The woman was gone too. The air felt empty, and she got the strange sensation that nothing and no one had been there for a while. She stood slowly and couldn't feel the ground beneath her feet. Everything around her was shrouded as if someone had put something over her eyes. She rubbed the back of her paw against her face and felt nothing there. She didn't understand and called out for anyone who might be around. There was no answer. She made her way back up the stairs, taking each one carefully. The haze around her continued as if fog had set into the house. Her strength returned with each step, though and she felt younger and younger until she had strength coursing through her body that she'd had when she was little. When she came to the back door, she exited without difficulty, but was then taken aback by what she noticed. It was wrong. The ground wasn't wet at all after the storm. She couldn't feel the air against her fur. The grass felt like nothing against the pads of her paws as she made her way around the house into her water pot. She bent to take a drink but felt nothing on her tongue. She looked down and saw the murky water not moving at all. She poured at it and watched as her paw went through it as if it weren't there. She tried to look toward the street but couldn't see far in the mist. She walked to the front porch slowly, considering what was happening. On a hunch, she reached out a paw to the front door and saw it move through the wooden barrier. She sat down and considered what this meant. She was the house's ghost now. Different than the people before, but still a ghost. Invisible and gone to all of the living. She had her own home and no one could hurt her anymore. She curled up at the top of the stairs leading down to the yard and wondered if this meant that she would always be alone too. Epilogue 35 Years Later Hey, honey, can you grab the other cat carrier? A young woman called to her husband. Yeah, I'll get it. Want me to bring the bags here, too? He responded. Yeah, please, she said as she reached the porch steps. The cat looked up at the new person approaching her, moving through the mist as if a spot of bright moonlight. The heart beat quickly. She knew those voices. She watched as the girl from long ago seemed to materialize. The mist began to fade for the first time in so long. The image of the girl walking up the steps morphed into the woman who was now walking up the steps. It was her somehow, though. She felt it. She knew it. She watched in awe as the woman set something down and slid a key into the front door, then opened it. She only stood there, though, looking in. The cat realized she was waiting for her partner. He joined them shortly appearing first as the little boy ghost she had befriended, then morphing into a grown man. They were back. They were together again. The cat wanted to cry out in joy. Her friends were here again, and they were not only alive, but they'd grown. Are we ready? the man asked, stopping beside the woman. She nodded and said with a deep breath, Welcome home. They took a few things in, and the cat watched from the doorway as they stepped inside. For the first time, she noticed that the house looked different. The old furniture was gone now. The place looked as if it had been cleaned and some repairs had been done. 
She was surprised and taking it all in before realizing that the two people had set things down and opened the two carriers. The black cat's attention was pulled from her own thoughts when a well-fed tuxedo cat padded out of one carrier and made a few noises before wandering off to look around. The woman was trying to coax a second out of the other carrier. It wasn't working and she sighed and shrugged at her partner. Oh, she'll come out when she's ready or hungry. You might as well bring some more stuff in, she told him. He nodded and they walked back to the porch. The edges of everything were still fuzzy, but the black cat gingerly stepped inside the house and toward the carrier. A small, fluffy, dark grey and white cat cowered in the back of it, anxiously looking around. It's okay. This place is safe now. I made sure. The black cat spoke softly to the scared one. She watched as the fluffy cat sniffed the air and made eye contact with her. The new one shifted in her carrier and then bolted out and tucked herself into a corner. The ghost cat calmly walked closer but made sure to keep her distance as the fluffy one watched her intently. I promise it's okay, the black ghost cat said reassuringly. We could both hear the voices of the people outside figuring out what boxes went where and that seemed to help calm the new one. She took her time but stood and walked over, extremely slowly and warily, to the ghost cat. She sniffed at the ghost cat's face and pulled back quickly, unsure of what was happening. Are you sure it's safe? The fluffy one asked. Absolutely sure, the black cat told her. She vowed to herself that she would watch over this family of two people and two cats for the rest of time. The grey and white cat crouched low but looked all around the house and the black cat just watched her patiently. Uh, honey, the man called out. The ghost cat hadn't noticed him walk back into the house. He set down a large box as gently as he could while looking at the ghost cat. The woman appeared in the doorway. What? she asked. He pointed at the two cats near the corner. The ghost cat realized suddenly that they could see her. She panicked and darted around them and back to the porch. Everything was clear now and it caught her off guard. She froze, looking around the world. So much looked different now and her heart was beating. In fact, it was beating pretty fast. She hadn't felt her heart beat for a very long time. But she was most shocked by the fact that so much was changed now. Street lamps looked different. The tree that had hung over the driveway was trimmed back now. The sidewalk had cracks in it. Wildflowers grew around the yard where they hadn't been before. New cars dotted the street, and there were more houses than before, filling gaps between homes that had previously boasted oversized yards. It's okay, little one. The woman's voice came from behind her. The cat turned around and saw the woman crouch down, one knee on the porch just over the threshold of the door. She held a hand out toward the cat. After a moment, the black cat approached her and sniffed her fingers, then let the woman softly touch her head. The contact felt incredible on her now corporeal body. Without thinking, she leaned into the woman's hand and rubbed her back against the open palm. She mewed excitedly, and the woman laughed. Are you the guardian of this house? The woman asked with a smile. I am. I remember you, the black cat replied, even though for the woman it came out as a bunch of meows. Before she knew it, she was in the woman's arms and the woman stood up and turned to her husband. He walked over and rubbed her chin with his fingers, then took her ear between his thumb and forefinger and massaged her against her head. Well, hi there. You going to be okay with us living here with you? He asked. She earnestly mewed at him, a long, dramatic, happy mew. The man and woman both laughed and nodded at each other. Well then, I guess thank you for welcoming us into your home. I promise we'll be a good family for you, the woman said. She set the black cat down after another moment, and they resumed bringing their belongings inside. Family, the black cat thought. I have my family. Okay, yeah, 
uh, it did bring me to tears a couple of times reading that one. Bit of a struggle to get to the end of it because it was so damn good. And to the author Bo, um, me, hope I, hope I did the story justice. Um, that one's for you, do. Uh, rest well, wherever you may find yourself now. Okay, that's enough for this evening. Ah, thanks for listening, everybody. Hope you enjoyed that one. <sighs> okay, till next time. Very, very sweet dreams, and bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this story today. Really means a lot to me and to the author of the story, of course. Well, if you want to know more about me, I'm pretty much everywhere on social media. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can download my music on SoundCloud. Um, I've got a Patreon if you feel like. Throw me a dollar or two. Very much appreciated. And of course, on Reddit, I have a place where you can leave stories if you want me to read one that you've written. Well, hoping to see you all again very soon. Till then, sweet dreams. Bye-bye.